Hey everybody, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher and welcome to day one of the 12 days of Litmus. We thought it would be really fun if every other day this month of December we posted some type of furniture flip. It might be something super basic that I've done before, but it might be something that I've never ever attempted before. And I want to bring you guys along for this ride of the 12 days of Christmas, but we're naming it the 12 days of Litmus. We just thought that this would be a really fun way to get you guys into the holiday spirit. It's probably one of my favorite times of years. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We've got a pretty big project on our hands. I'm gonna actually be duping a dresser that I saw online. I'll pop it up here. As you can see, it's pretty pricey, but we're gonna do it for a fraction of the cost. All right, you guys, I'm starting off by removing all this hardware. I'm gonna set it aside because it's gonna be changed out. I'm gonna go ahead and take the drawers out as I'm going so that I can get a really good clean. So I typically don't get dressers with uh, drawer issues, but I knew when I got this one that I would just have to screw this little guy back in and it'll be perfectly fine. By the way, I did grab this dresser at Goodwill for $45, so not too much of an investment up front, which you guys know that I absolutely love when I can find cheap furniture that's still really good quality. Let's clean. Good old Dawn dish soap will do the trick to get all this dust and grease off of the surface so that this paint can adhere. And the reason I do it before I sand anything is so that I'm not grinding that oil and dirt into the actual wood. Now that everything's washed, I'm just gonna go back with some clean water and rinse. Our next step is gonna be sanding. So it's important that we get this wood all dried down. You can either let it dry itself or you can speed up the process a little bit like I like to do and use a towel. I got my whole surf prep set up. So we've got the three by four electric race sander and it's connected to the vacuum that really helps eliminate all that dust from going in the air or in your lungs. It all goes and sucks it up right there, which is really awesome. I am going to be actually sanding this down to raw wood. So I'm gonna be starting with 80 grit sandpaper and we'll go up in grit from there. So the 80 grit is gonna be the most coarse um, in this lineup that I'm going to be using and then we'll get less and less coarse as we go along. done with the 80 grit and 
We're getting a little bit of red coming through down here, if you can see that. And I believe that is because the veneer on this thing is so thin that I blew through it when I was sanding. Um, I've never worked with this thin of veneer. And what I was going to do was a wood, um, was like whitewash the wood. So I'd paint it with a much more watered down paint but I think I'm gonna be pivoting a little bit. And instead of doing the watered down paint down here, I'll just do full blown paint here. And then the top should still be good to go as far as the, um, the watered down paint goes. And that'll kind of flow throughout the whole front of the drawers. I know it might be a little confusing, just stay tuned and you'll see what I mean when it all comes together. We are gonna move on to a little bit of a lower grit. Um, I don't need to spend as much time because the reason it took so long for the 80 grit was because you had to get all that finish off. But now we're really just gonna be smoothing it out. And so I'm gonna do that right quick with my 120 grit. All right, perfect. So now that has a much smoother finish. And now I'm gonna move on to the fabric and cutting those to size for each one of the drawers so we can get that sticking on there. So we've got some slats and then I found this curtain thingy at Goodwill for a couple of bucks. So I'm gonna be turning this into a, the drawer fronts basically. This is gonna be enough fabric for all six of the drawers. I'll be cutting it to size and then I'll basically be framing each drawer out with this slat material. It's just uh, one inch pine at from Home Depot. Actually, I think it's two inch pine um, from Home Depot. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my miter saw to get the exact measurements and we're gonna miter the corners so that they really have a flawless look. So I've got my miter saw at a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna go ahead and make the first cut. That way then we can measure how long the actual piece of slat needs to be. All right, first one done. Let's make sure it fits on there nicely. Sure does, perfect. So from there, I can go ahead and make all 12 of these and I can just use this as the template to cut each one. the whole dresser sanded down let's talk about the drawers i'm not going to be sanding them down because i'm actually going to be covering them up let me show you what i've got in mind so like i told you guys i found this curtain like thing at goodwill uh several months back and i was like i have to get this i don't know what i'm going to use it for but i have to get this because it was literally like three dollars so what I'm gonna do is lay it out onto the grass so that I don't get paint anywhere important. And I'm gonna be painting this so that it kind of has a more neutral look. So it's very yellowy right now and I wanna tone that down a lot. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it with a color by Dixie Bell called Drop Cloth. New plan, gotta put some newspaper down. Right, the whole thing is painted, so that's gonna dry for a while. And in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and get some measurements on these drawers over here. So we'll know exactly how big to cut the pieces of fabric. So this doesn't have to go all the way to the edges because we're gonna have the trim around it. So I'm gonna call it 28 by eight. So that's eight times six, that's nine, that's 48. So like I said a little bit ago, there is a ton of redness coming through 
And that's just gonna be that different wood color of the wood underneath that veneer. And so what I'm gonna do to block that in is I'm gonna be using some Dixie Bell's Boss. And this is a stain blocking primer by Dixie Bell, but it's water-based. So, you know, I like to stay away from oil-based uh, materials as much as I can. So I love that they have this option for the stain blocker as a water-based option. I'm just gonna be painting the face frame of this dresser. Um, again, because the rest of it, I really want to do the paint wash. And so, you know, these are gonna be behind the drawers, so they're not gonna be really seen. Um, but we're gonna start out with the boss and we'll come back later with the same color that I'm gonna be doing the paint wash. going to be hanging this up overnight so that it dries completely that way tomorrow I'll come back cut it to size then we'll be able to go ahead and attach it onto the drawers all right, it's the next day. The curtain here is dry, so it's time to get to cutting. And so my first step is gonna just be to cut off the ends because those are part of that curtain that I don't really need. Now that we've got all the fabric cut, I am going to be putting these on the drawer fronts like so. I am gonna be using a mixture of some spray adhesive and some E6000, which is very sticky material. So the reason I don't need this to be exactly um, the exact size of the drawer is because we're gonna have those pieces that are gonna frame out the drawer. So no big deal there. We are going to just make sure it's in the middle and as straight as possible, and then go ahead and stick it on. I would say my main concern is that I want it to be nice and flush. So I'm gonna really spread it out, smooth it out nicely. And now that I know how easy that was, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of the five drawers. Now we're gonna let that adhesive dry for a while. And in the meantime, I'm gonna begin the paint wash on the main body of the dresser. It's time to start with our paint wash. So as I told you guys, I am gonna be doing a little bit of mixing of my paint, some water and some paint, and it's called a paint wash. It's where you just dilute the paint a little bit, and it sort of acts as a stain, if you will, and it still allows the wood grain to show through, but it also allows you to change the color of the wood. So I don't really like how yellow this wood is, so I wanna tone it down a little bit. And also, since these slats aren't quite the same color, as the dresser itself is as I sanded it down I can sort of more closely match the colors when I use a paint wash so I've got the color sandbar by Dixie Belle and all I'm gonna do is I have a separate container here that I'm going to be using as my mixing container I've got my paint and then I've got a little jar of water as well. So be sure to make, uh, or be sure to mix your paint up pretty well. And then you don't need to go overboard when you're dumping your paint in. Um, just make sure that you get enough for your part that you're actually painting and then you should be good. And it's all really how you want it to be. If you want it to be really, really light paint wash, then maybe do like a one-to-one -one ratio. If you want it to be a little bit, just like a tad bit diluted, then maybe you do like a one-to-10 ratio. It really just depends. So 
In this one, I'm just gonna start adding in a little bit of water here and start mixing it up to see what type of consistency I get right off the bat. So it's already thinning out quite a bit, but I think I even wanna go a little bit more. I do want that wood grain to show through. So I'm just gonna continue. It's gonna be really liquidy if you want it to um, just be more of a wash. So it's gonna be you know, pretty drippy, which is what you're looking for in that paint wash. And then there's a couple of different ways you can apply it. You can either take a brush, brush it on, and then wipe it back with a rag, or you can just straight up use a rag and wipe it on as you go. And I am gonna be using the rag method. So I've got my whole box of rags here. They tend to soak up pretty fast, so might need to use several. But I think I like my consistency, so I'm going to just begin by dipping my rag in there, painting it on like so. And I wanna get all the edges as well because um, some of them are gonna be seen. And then I think I'm gonna take another rag and sort of wipe back that excess to have the look of the paint wash. There we go. So now I'm gonna just do that on all of these slats and then we'll move on to the dresser and do the same thing over there. I've got one more guy here. Found it easier to actually use the brush to apply it and the rag to wipe back the excess. So now that I've got all the slats finished up here for the face frames of the drawers, we're gonna move on to the actual dresser and I'm gonna be doing the same paint wash on the top and on the sides. And then I'm gonna be doing just a straight up paint job on the front facing where I had done the boss. That's our next step. So with the dresser, I'm doing the exact same thing. It's just a bigger surface. So I've got the same concoction here in my bucket and I'm going to apply it and then wipe it back. You can do it in sections or if you want it to soak in a little bit more and be less transparent, you could do the whole side and then come back and wipe it back. Up to you on that regard as well. All right, it's time for the face frames. I actually did one already, forgot to hit record, so we're gonna do this one together first and I'll explain exactly what I'm doing here. I am going to be framing out these drawer fronts here like so. So first I'm gonna do the top and the bottom, the longer ones. So that way, when I go and do the side pieces, if there's anything that needs to be trimmed off at all, I can do that on the side pieces as opposed to the longer pieces. So I'm using my 18 gauge brad nailer with a 5 8 inch nail. And I'm just going to make sure that I countersink these nails in there so that when I am going back to do the wood filler, to fill these holes so they're not noticeable, there's a little bit of room for me to fill that with. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here with the side pieces. Fit those in. If there are gaps in your side pieces, that's okay. Again, you can go back through with that wood filler and make those mitered joints really seamless. All right, two down, four more to go. All 
right, now that we've got all of these front slats on, it is time to fill in the nail holes and the edges here with my wood filler. And I love getting this color changing wood filler. That way it goes on pink and then it dries that natural color so I know exactly when it's ready to be sanded back. I just like to apply it with my finger. That way I can have the most control. And you don't need a lot just a tiny bit to fill each and every one of those nail holes. So while that wood filler is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the base and we're gonna do a top coat with the clat, clat and clear coat, no, satin clear coat by Dixie Bell. And this is just gonna give it a nice protective layer to prevent and help with any paint chipping later on. Now that the wood filler is dry here, I'm gonna take my surf prep with the 320 grit. We're gonna sand down the nail holes and the edging. Alrighty, it is time for the top coat here on the fronts of the drawers, and then we're getting really close to the home stretch here. So I went ahead and did one more little coat of the paint wash to uh, mask those nail holes. And now we need to seal it all in just like we did with the base of the dresser. And I'm also gonna put a top coat here because this was also painted. And just as much protection as we can get, the better. And I'm using a foam brush from Dixie Bell. I've actually got some new foam brushes and this is my first project using it since I haven't really been furniture flipping too much lately. But I really like it, it's durable. It's really nice for these flat surfaces as well. Alrighty, top coat's all on these drawers. Last step here is I'm going to screw in some new hardware holes and we're gonna put this baby together. All right, it's time to put on some hardware. So I've got my hardware jig, which this thing is a lifesaver when it comes to drilling new holes for hardware. So I'll definitely link it down below for you guys. It just really allows you to get very precise measurements on every single drawer as opposed to trying having to do it on each drawer. This, you just gotta measure out one time and then you're done. So my hardware is four inches. So I set my holes to be four inches apart. And so basically all we've got to do is mark the middle of the drawer, which I already did. And then we will line everything up and then go ahead and start drilling. I like to generally just do a little drill and then I'll take the hardware jig off and then we'll continue to drill all the way through. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and do all six drawers and we'll come back and dust everything off and then we will get to putting on the hardware. got the first one on here. I love it. We still got a little bit of cleanup to do and stuff, but I'm gonna put the rest of the hardware on and then we'll do the final reveal. All 
Alrighty guys, that concludes day one of the 12 days of Flipmas. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. It's so awesome getting back to furniture flipping and I'm so glad that I can share this experience with you guys. I am so looking forward to the next 11 flips in this little mini series. Please let me know what you guys think of this piece down below. It kind of gave me a little run for my money as as far as the fabric goes. I remember that last time I did something similar to this with the burlap on the front that it was a little bit wrinkly so I really tried my best to get this as flat as possible. There might be a few wrinkles but after all it is a DIY project. I just wanted to show you guys that although this a piece similar to this costs $1,800 online or even more some places, similar pieces like this cost more, which is absolutely crazy. But again, I just wanted to show you guys that you can do this yourself. Whether you are flipping furniture for a profit or if you're doing something for your own home and you want a higher end looking piece, but maybe you don't have the budget for it there's nothing wrong with creating your own. And then if you're doing it for profit, might as well get some inspiration from places that are selling that higher end furniture, but maybe you won't sell it for $1,800, but at least you could sell it for maybe a little bit more than you might sell a normal piece that maybe is just painted plain. This piece I am thinking about listing on Facebook Marketplace around that four or $500 mark. I typically, post these six to nine drawer dressers for right around that price. And then I wait at least a week before lowering the price because I wanna make sure that enough people see it. And again, since this is a piece that I know goes for way higher, a similar looking piece, then I wanna give it the time that it deserves on there. And I think that it's super important that we as DIYers and furniture flippers or furniture finishers, whatever we want to call ourselves, I think that it's important that we don't sell ourselves short because our time and our effort is definitely worth the money. All right, you guys, I sold this baby. It took around three weeks. I had it listed on Facebook Marketplace at $600. A lot of interest and actually a lot of people asking me where it is originally from. And so I had to tell them, you know, I actually made this over. This is like a one of a kind dresser. People absolutely loved it. They did want me to drop the price pretty low, around like $400. And since I was listing it at 600, I just couldn't go that low. Um, so I waited it out and then my best friend actually ended up telling me that she loved it. It matches everything in their apartment. So she is actually gonna be the one that is buying this. We're about to go drop it off here today and she is buying it for $550. So I would say in total, I added it up this morning and the total material costs, including the dresser, the hardware, the slats, and this, um, it was actually a curtain. It all costs around $120. So that is a pretty darn good profit. Can't do the math in my head right now, but Harrison will pop it up on the screen for us. That is a great profit going from $550, taking away $120 and giving us $430. $430 profit. Thanks, Neem. All right, so we're gonna get this loaded up and dropped off. This first piece of furniture was a perfect way to kick off these 12 days of Christmas. So be sure and get subscribed because we have 11 more videos for you before Christmas. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you on the flip side.